Y'all, I like Michael Knowles a lot. I listen to him every day. He's right about a lot of stuff. The guy's super smart. I don't even know half the words he uses. I have to look them up. But he's wrong about one thing, and that is the definition of marriage. He speaks about the legal meaning, or he speaks about the meaning of marriage a lot. He says marriage is for the procreation of children, or he speaks of the good of the spouses and the procreation of children. That's what marriage is for, which implies that all that is essential, which is wrong. That's a redefinition, which is why we have all these problems. I think Michael Knowles you know, he has that book, um, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. I think he's had his mind uh, uh, controlled and uh, manipulated, be however he puts it, from by accident. He doesn't even know. He, anyway, um, he, he they, they're control. In other words, the, his, the language of Vatican II is controlling Michael Knowles. He doesn't know it. He's not defining marriage right. But in a, in a moment of clarity, I don't know if you call it a Freudian slip or what, he actually says marriage is for procreation alone. Listen to this. Let's get it on here. And I'm going to comment how he effectively he kills NFP, even though he's a pro-NFP guy. He makes an argument why NFP is wrong. Let's hear. We, let's get him on here. We'll listen. Here we go. A, a union of a man and a woman for the sake, ordered toward the education and procreation of children. Okay, so he just said, and he doesn't say good to the spouse. He says this: is what marriage is for procreation. So the conjugal act is for procreation. That's what it's for. But let's keep listening. That's that's what it's for. Yeah, you know a thing by what it's for. The leftist steers tumbler is for giving me leftist steers. The microphone is for. Uh, conducting my mellifluous tones to you. Those are all primary purposes for those things that he mentions. And the primary purpose of the conjugal act is not a secondary purpose. It's for generation. Now. And, and that's what marriage is for. Okay. We got rid of that with contraception. We got rid of the purpose of marriage with contraception. Contraception eliminates the same amount of babies as NFP. So if we got rid of the purpose of marriage with contraception, we got rid of the purpose of marriage with NFP. We did. It's exactly what we've done. And you can't, there's no way you can get around that. They're both 98% effective and all that stuff. Here, let's listen to what else he says. We got, we got rid of that. It's 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago at this point. Okay, so then what's next? Well, marriage is uh, a, a union of a man and a wife for the good of the spouses. Okay, so there's nothing left. If you don't have procreation, there's got to be some reason why people want to get married if procreation is not the primary purpose. And he just said, what's left? What else is left is the good of the spouses. A secondary end. You've made that now your primary purpose, which is what all contraception does. You cut the head off the primary purpose of marriage. You have a bunch of secondary ends there, one of which is the good of the spouses. So people want what they can get from marriage other than kids. So you have, and here, listen to what he says. Well, why is it just got to be a man and a wife? If we're, if we're taking children out of the equation, then why is it got to be a man and a wife? It doesn't. If you take children out of the equation, you don't need to have kids. So you can marry your Buick. Or two dudes or whatever. Here, listen. Okay, all right, fair enough. It can be a couple of dudes. Hey, by the way. Yeah, that's right. If now that we've taken children out of the equation and that children are the stickiest part about a marriage. That's another way of saying it, yeah, they're sticky. That's the children are the purpose. They legally need to be there. I shouldn't say that. I guess you could say sticky, but I anyway, know he's just trying to make the point. Why does it have to be a, a lifelong union? Can it doesn't have to be a lifelong union. If you remove children as the primary purpose, there's no reason for permanence. The, re the reason marriage is permanent is because the, the husband and wife are a symbol or an icon of Christ and his church, which are inseparable. So that when there's marriage, you can't get rid of it. And the kids have a natural law right to an intact home. So it needs to be for life. You know, here we go. Listen, can't we just kind of split it up? What if you just don't like this person anymore? Okay, yeah, we can split it up. We can have no fault divorce, and we can erase the distinctions between the sexes, and we forget about having children, and we can. So then, what is it? 
what is it? It's not that it's become something new. It's not that it's expanded to become something larger or greater. It just disappears. Exactly. What is marriage without procreation? Nothing. It just disappears. Look at the statistics. How is marriage these days? It's disappeared. Just down because there's nothing to hang on to. Why are people getting married? For if there's if you can't define it, you can't defend it. There's no legal definition. There's no rights and duties. It's just whatever you want it to be. And so someone can say, I want it to be something different. And they just take off with it. So this is so anyway, that's cool what Michael Knowles says, but he effectively is saying that NFP or if you make NFP licit, you are destroying marriage because you are killing the primary purpose the standalone purpose the independent purpose which is procreation and that's the only thing that's finite objective and can be defined legally so i'm hoping he will see this or I'll some i've been trying to get him the message for a long time when he keeps saying nfp or good of the spouses he's effectively giving the argument for gay marriage and he doesn't even realize it okay that's all i want to say on that one nighty